Well, here's a silly teardown. This is just a, a excuse me, a five dollar special Amazon LED dimmer, um, twelve volts, eight amps. I bought it just because I need. Uh, I actually need a dimmer that will work on 48 volts and since this was five dollars I figured I could probably chop it up and modify it uh, probably just I'm assuming that whatever active circuitry is in here is just running on 12 volts straight up and they're probably just using a like an n-channel MOSFET for switching and I figure I can just put like a 7812 to run the active stuff and then just you know rewire it a little bit and get it so that maybe use higher voltage MOSFETs and make it work fine on 48 volts you know and I figured it's cheaper to buy something like this than to bother with, uh, you know, making up my own circuit board for it and everything. Or even just wiring it on like a breadboard or dead bugging it. You know, five bucks from Amazon with free shipping because I have Amazon Prime. It's just not worth the effort to do anything else. So anyways, this will just be a silly little quick teardown. I just want to see what they're using in here. There were some pictures on Amazon and it looks like it's basically one IC and a MOSFET. You know, for switching 8 amps, you're going to need a discrete FET. They're not going to be doing that in an IC. And maybe it'll even run on a higher voltage. So there's the entire extent of what we have inside of it. Uh, it's kind of amusing. You can see it's intended for having a pot mount to the board. So we just have two devices and the big FET. This looks like a little LDO of some sort. Um, you can see this is presumably reverse bias protection. Oops. Not much to it, which is kind of what I expected. It's, it's got the nice quick connect terminals. It's connectorized, which is nice. So this is it. Nothing at all on the bottom side, aside from some really heavy planes. And actually of interest is the fact that... Yeah, that's kind of terrible. So, it's negative, positive, positive, negative. But anyways, that does confirm that they're low side switching, because you can see that out minus is connected to the power device. So this is an end channel device, which is kind of what I expected. Another thing of interest is... Look at all those vias. I wonder if they're trying to use this as heat sinking to some extent. It wouldn't surprise me. So you just see it comes in. Two high sides are tied together and there's a diode. Runs through a... Um, let's see. So, yeah, actually that's kind of slightly horrible. So... Presumably the tab is grounded. Interestingly enough, looking at this, this is a 7.8. This particular device here, if it will focus, is a 7.8LO5. And that's really excellent because um, that means that that's a, uh, good for 35 volts, I think. I forget what the 7.8, they, they're higher. Some of them are 60 volts maybe even. So that means all of this stuff is running on 5 volts. So you can see that, let's see, this is ground right here. Yeah. So this is the... Well, that's kind of weird. So it goes through a diode. There's a capacitor ground to 102, so a 1K resistor in series with the regulator. So maybe that's startup inrush product prevention or something. But that's kind of strange. So goes through that 1K resistor, and then this is your plus five volts, two capacitors to ground. Well, no, that's plus five. So that's just a capacitor between that and ground. And then we can also see that our pot, there's a resistor in series with this pin, and there's a resistor there which goes to ground. Um, I don't even see where the signal's being taken. Oh no! Wait. And then here's the signal taken off, which goes to this device. Um, so this is. <laughs> so here we have an NE555 and an LM. 
358. So I think they are, I would bet that this is just running as stable and then what they're doing is they're just using this, I think the 358 is a comparator. Um, one second. That would be a dual op amp. So, oops. from the look of it, it looks like they're only in fact using one half of the op amp. Um, so that's ground or that's VCC. So I bet this side is just left floating. And then they're just comparing, so I bet there's a sawtooth wave on that pin. Actually, you know what? This thing's kind of interesting. I'm going to... One second, let me get a power supply and we'll take a look. Yep, so if you take a look here, you can see we've got a nice sawtooth wave. Whoops, bad connection. So it's um, sawtooth, you can see it's, an, it's an basically an integration waveform, so it's not like they're driving at the current source or anything. Got a nice triangle-ish wave. Right now the, the period is about 680 hertz. You can see the two markers right now are 1.62 and 3.36 volts. So this is presumably basically the triple five operating in pure stable mode. And then that's gonna be compared to another voltage which is gonna be driving the FET. So what we should be able to do is, right now the FET's totally railed because the pot is um, wandered off. Where did the lid go? <laughs> Excuse me first. Oh, there it is. So if I put the potentiometer on here, so and then we look at one of the. So that's off, and then that's presumably all the way on, though not quite. You can see they're not. Even though it's supposed to be mostly off, it can't quite drive the FETs. You know, the, just the capacitive, this is just a, um, it's a cheapo op amp, and the output, it can't source enough current to drive the gates very hard. So, even when it's only off for a little while, it doesn't quite, and you can see the long turnoff period. It looks like it can pull up a lot harder than it can pull down. But, there you go, it's just a nice ultra ultra simple pulse width modulator goes all the way off but it doesn't go all the way on which is a little lame but whatever um, in any event it totally does what I it, it does exactly what I'd want so you can see that um, it's only 3.88 volts peak to peak which is kind of interesting so I'm on 500 millivolts of div six seven and a half yeah so the peak voltage here is only 3.4 volts or so, which I suspect is largely a function of the uh, regulator. I don't know. Um, so we have 4.926 volts on the output of the... Oh, I know what's going on. The... Um, so because this is a cheap non-railed rail op amp, it, it doesn't swing rail to rail, which is why we're not getting, you know, a decent positive rail. It's swinging only as far up as it can. So this, I would hope this is a logic level switching MOSFET because it's not getting fully saturated if it's not. Anyways, this is, I bought this on the off chance it'd be easy to convert to 48 volt operation and considering what I've seen so far of the internals, absolutely it will. Um, this actually, I'm quite pleased I'll probably buy more of these. I have a couple situations. Um, I use 48 volt muffin fans for ventilation because I got a box of, I think like 28 of them from All Electronics for like $20 a couple years ago. So I have like a big panel of eight of them, you know, ventilating my server closet. And the only downside is that right now I'm just using transformers and a 10 amp variac to regulate a couple hundred, you know, maybe 20 watts of fans because it's the only variac I have. So using this will let me make a little, you know, kind of stationary brick that does a much better, or a much simpler job. And so you can just, well, here. Oh. So 
here's the board in detail. You can see LM358, and I was there's an it's an NE555, and I was probing right on that pin to get that sawtooth shift wave. Here's the uh, 78 LO5 regulator. Here's the input voltage. You can see there's a diode for reverse bias protection. And here's the output MOSFET of some sort. In this case, it is an AH25AH FDD8780. Then there's just these are presumably uh, actually um this is I believe a bypass cap for the uh, the 55. This does not have a bypass cap, which is kind of sloppy. Um, this is just across the rails, which is even. This may also be bypassing. This is presumably. No, I think this is some like an internal reference. Never mind. This is the bypass cap for both of these devices, and then this is presumably the timer cap, and these are the timer resistors. Um, it's quite nice. It's. I mean, these are TI branded devices. This is a Fairchild branded FET, so it's not like they're using you know, genuinely terrifying Chinese whatnot. Here's the input you can see. It goes through a diode. I'd hope this is shot key, but I guess it doesn't really matter because you're dropping uh, 7 volts in the regulator, so if you drop half a volt here, it doesn't, who cares? And then there's just a, um, oh, I had it backwards, it's 201, so there's a 200 ohm series resistor. Um, I wonder what the point of that is. And you can also see this is a capacitor to ground. Um, yeah. So the whole circuit's just utterly simple. PC board's quite nicely labeled. You have out plus, out minus, VCC and ground. Um, I'm pretty impressed with it. Comes in a big box. Um, the box it comes in is physically fairly large, but um, I don't really care. It's small enough for my purposes. I'm just going to look up these parts and see what, if anything, I need to change to make it work at 48 volts.